my brave scholars, I hope that you have not been just inundated with all the snow that we've had today. Um, I'm going to go over the multiple choice practice that, uh, that we did. I did it with you. I had not done these two before, so I printed out the practice of Sonnet 55 and the Chambered Nautilus, and I, I did it. Um, I want to just walk you through that process and give you the correct answers. I've uh, So this will be kind of a sped up version of what I did, and just to kind of be honest with you about which ones I got wrong, which ones I got right, and why. And then afterwards, after I show you the correct answers, I will um, show you what I'm expecting in terms of corrections. So this is this is your assignment for Cyber Wednesday. Um, and I'm just going to, again, walk you through what I did. Um, when I printed it out, I looked at it, and I looked at Sonnet 55, and I kind of rolled my eyes. I'm not super excited about a sonnet in the first place, if going to be quite honest. And I read it once, and then I read the first question, and I did this exact thing. Let's see what the second poem is, because I really don't want to deal with that right now. So I instead started with The Chambered Nautilus. So we'll do that. Um, this poem was by Oliver Wendell Holmes, and I was more familiar with it. I'd read it a few times before, and so I read it. Uh, in fact, let me just go ahead and show you. I didn't annotate it very much at all. As I was, uh, because I was a little more familiar with it. Okay, this is the ship of pearl which poets feign sails the unshadowed main of the venturous bark that flings on the sweet summer wind its purpled wings its gulfs enchanted when the siren sings. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you because we just did that, but I will take a look at the questions and walk you through the correct answers. Okay. Number 11, what message did the speaker take from the shell? Okay, the correct answer, as I looked at it, um, A is too broad, so I scratched that out. Um, this is just stupid, so I scratched that out. Um, this has nothing to do, this is actually the opposite of the poem's philosophy that people should protect themselves, so I was left with B and C. And um, in a way, I think B is much more specific, so I chose B, and that is the correct answer. This may be true, but it's just not as specific. This is one of those times where we're looking at the two decent answers, and B is more specific to the actual intended meaning of the poem. So, therefore, I chose it. Turns out that it was right. Okay, number 12. Uh, what does the word bark mean in line 3? Okay, this one... Uh, when I came against it, I wasn't quite sure, and so I skipped it. So whenever I skip something, I put a big um, box around it so that I can come back to it. In fact, let me just let me just show you. I'll just go through my original paper with you, and I'll just cover up the answers coming so that you pay attention to me. Ah. Okay, so number twelve. That's exactly what I did. I looked at it. What does the word bark mean? I looked. I knew it wasn't going to be this one because, again, that's just ridiculously stupid. I didn't think it was going to be Flotsam or Jetsam because we're not watching The Little Mermaid. I didn't think it was going to be Seafoam. I kind of thought it would be this one, so I put a little mark next to it, but I wasn't sure, so I was going to come back to it, and I did later. And uh, the answer, <laughs> I should say, the answer is E. It's a type of boat. Okay, number 13. What does the speaker imagine when he sees the shell? Um, the correct answer is the places where the Nautilus live. I struggled with this one too a little bit. Again, I just went through and I, I crossed out the ones that I knew weren't going to be right, and I was left with these two, similar to the other two up here. It's not the voice of God speaking to him that's nowhere in the poem. Um, the creature's slow death, that's nowhere in the poem. Marvels of nature. This one is similar to a couple you're going to see. This one is just a little vague. It might be there, and they'll try to do that on the questions where they'll give you possible answers, but they're, and they may be true, but they're just a little bit vague, and they're hoping you'll pick them because they sound pretty good. But in this case, um, I was looking specifically at a couple of points in the poem. Let me find them. Okay. Okay, so at the beginning, the question is asking you, what does the speaker imagine when he sees the shell? And the imagination portion of the poem starts at the beginning, and it really only lasts until right here when he starts looking at the actual shell that's been broken. So this is really the only imaginative portion of the, of the poem. And I looked at it, and it says uh, he's thinking about it sailing here, being flinged here in these gulfs with the sirens and in coral reefs. And so it's, it, 
three or four different places in a way. And they didn't mention any specific oceans, so that's why I chose E, and that is the correct answer. Number 14, what about the chambered nautilus that makes it, what is it about the chambered nautilus that makes it appropriate for this poem's message, okay? Um, this, it's important to note that it's asking you specifically about the structure of the shell and the structure of the creature. Um, and so anything that doesn't have anything to do with that, I can immediately cross out like this one. No, just because it's died. Um, it's indigenous to the oceans near the poet's home in Massachusetts. That has nothing to do with the poet's message. So I crossed that out. Highly prized for its beautiful shell. It never mentions anything about it being highly prized. Um, and again, if I thought that the message was about becoming better and becoming uh, in growth, then I knew it had nothing to do with this. Um, this, again, has nothing to do with the specific shell or the specific message. So this, in my mind, was one of the clearer answers, and it was B. I got that one pretty quickly. So, so far, if I'm looking at this page, my first response to it is number 12. I want to come back and check, but I feel pretty good about 11, 13, and 14. So I moved on. Okay, number 15. Based on the author's words, which of the following is the best description of the shape of the chambered nautilus? That one, I had a little bit of advantage in that I knew what a chambered nautilus was, and I knew that it was none of these. So this one was very easy for me to get. Um, if I didn't know that, I probably would have tried to figure out, based on the description, and he talks specifically about, um, let's see, the spiral growing and a coil. And, talk, and so talking about this spiral that grows and grows and grows. And spiral is really the only shape that in a sphere I would see. Like an elongated tube, that would just, that has nothing to do with the spiral. Irregular, that it just didn't make sense. None of them, the rest of them made sense. Number 16. How does Holmes compare the growth of the Nautilus to the development of human beings? Okay. Um, this one I didn't struggle with too much because I, f I feel like I had a good grasp of the poem. And, and when you have a good grasp of the poem, sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it can be a little dangerous. I kind of went too quickly on these answers. Um, and it could have been it could have been bad, but I happened to, to get this one right. This one I crossed out just because it was completely opposite to the meaning. You'll find that in some of the answers, they will they'll try to see if you misinterpreted the poem. And if you did, then they'll try to nail you on one of those responses. If you look, there are no other ones that are in any way similar to this. And all of the other responses about growth, they, they seem to be going against this. So that's just not going to be appropriate. Um, the question itself may be helpful. He's, you're looking for how he compares the growth of this to our development. So A, the Nautilus creates a new chamber every year. Humans do not. Um, that's maybe true. But Holmes doesn't really make that comparison. In fact, he kind of says we should create a new chamber, a new kind of metaphorically a growth. So that's not right. D, the death of any of God's creatures. In this case, the Nautilus is as important a loss as the death of a person. Death is nowhere. It's not mentioned, so we cross that one out. Again, either in death, the Nautilus speaks to the soul. It's just like they couldn't think of anything else to write, so they made it sound really ethereal. C is the best answer that people's souls should outgrow their constraints and expand until completely free. Okay. Uh, number 17. Oliver Wendell Holmes would agree with which of the following statements. This one, okay, this is a good one to look at because I almost went with C. And I almost went with C because I did not read the question carefully enough. I thought, for some reason, I thought I felt or heard or saw the word not. Um, and so I, I, you can see I started making check marks. And I guess I was in my mind thinking that they would never, they wouldn't just ask which one would he agree. They would, it would be a harder way if they asked which one did he not agree with. So I outthought the question makers and I started checking off. Well, I think he would agree with this one. So that's not going to be it. And I think sure he would agree that you should study and appreciate creatures from nature because he was a naturalist. Then I got here and I circled it, build greater and more elegant personal edifices like buildings. That didn't seem right. And then I read it again and I kind of caught myself here. And once I read it carefully, I just had to pick one. Which one statement is he going to agree with? And this one was clearly uh, the right answer for, for me. It's important to keep growing throughout life. You'll notice how many of the questions had that as kind of a common theme. Okay, number 18. Which of the following is not true regarding the meter of the first stanza? All right, here we go. 
um, talking about meter. I'm going to come back and address meter in just a few minutes uh, in terms of what you need to know about for the test for rhyme and rhythm and all that. One thing I want to apologize about is the way that the formatting was in this poem. It mentions stanza, and then as you can see, there's no stanzas listed for you. It's just a formatting error on my part. I should have gone in and denoted the stanzas. If that ever occurs, you usually can still figure it out because it's really just asking you um, the meter, and it gives you specific line references. So I got the answer B, and that is correct, but let me show you how I did it. I didn't even pay attention to what a trochee was. I looked at the other three, four, and noticed that they were asking about the meter, so I paid attention to that, and I counted, um, is it iambic pentameter? Yes, it is, because I just counted the syllables. This, let's see if I can get my hand in here, this is the ship of pearl, which poets feign. That's 10, so that's iambic pentameter. Um, then I looked at lines 4 and 5. I read if they were iambic pentameter, and they were, so line 1, 2, 3, 4. On the sweet summer wind, it's purpled wings. That's 10 beats. I'm going to go ahead and say that's probably going to be an iambic pentameter. Six iambic trimeter. One, two, three, four, five, six. And and coral reef slide bear. That's got six beats to it, so it's trimeter. Seven iambic hexameter. Same thing. I just all I really did was is counted the beats, and I I found out that a I knew that these all were true, and I was looking for the one that was not true, so I chose B by process of elimination. Okay, hang in there, almost done. I know this is super exciting. All right, number 19. 19 is asking you, what figure of speech is found in the line from the second stanza? Again, this may be through you, because you were looking for the second stanza, but they gave you the line, so hopefully you kind of kept your head and finished off. And this is a really pretty easy one. As the frail tenant shaped his growing shell, only people can actually physically shape and are called tenants. So that's going to be personification. Okay, last one, number 20. What are the two classical allusions found in this poem? This is huge. If you do not pay attention to the fact that it's a classical allusion that they're asking about, you might get caught and choose number, um, number, number A. Because uh, it's there is there is a brief illusion, uh, or you might think there's an illusion to the Jules Verne ship, but if you look specifically, you're looking for classical illusions. So you look at the choices that they give you, and you look back at your poem that you annotated a little bit, hopefully. I guess I can find mine now. Okay, so if I look at what I did, I noticed first of all that there's a siren, and they are the um, the sea maids, okay, so I knew that one was correct, so I looked back at my answers, and I know that it's it could be this one, I know that it could be um, this one, so I can already go ahead and knock the rest of them out, and I'm looking for, am I, do I find holy scriptures, or do I find the enchanting, uh, I'm sorry, the sea god, so as I look before, I don't see really anything that's scriptural, but I do notice Triton, ba -ba -ba. and so I know that the correct answer is E. Ta -da, process of elimination. So for that set, I ended up getting 100%. I got them all right. Um, really just fairly luckily on that one specifically that I missed. Okay, so go ahead and uh, stop this video. Make any changes that you need to, to your answers. Let me show you what I would, what I want you to do. And I'll come, I'll come back to Sonnet 55 in the next video. But let me show you what I want you to do for the ones that you got wrong. So number four, I got the... Surprise, that's from the sonnet. Let me try this again. Let's say that I got, um, come back to number 12, because I wasn't sure about that one. Okay, the correct answer is E, but let's just pretend like I had put B. Okay, so I had turned this in before, and I had highlighted B as my answer, but I ended up getting it wrong. So what I want you to do for the ones you get wrong is just come back to your original document, and then in red, if you will, just kind of change your color to red, write a sentence or two explaining why you got it wrong and what the correct answer would be. So I might say something like, um, what does the word bark in line three mean? I chose sea foam, okay. I chose sea foam uh, because I did not know that bark um, was a type of ship. I, uh, uh, sea foam sounded like appropriate answer, um, whereas the other 
one, two, three choices did not. However, in looking at one, three more closely, and then I would look at line three more closely. So let's do that. This is the ship of pearl which poets feign sails the unshadowed main on the venturous, the venturous bark that flings on the sweet summer wind its purpled wings. Engulfs enchanted. I, mean, I have to be real honest. I'm not exactly sure why I put why I put that this was a ship. I guess I know that I was thinking about it was the bark that flings on the sweet summer wind, and it flings its purpled wings. And I was looking at. I knew it had to be either. I was thinking that it had to be either sea foam or a type of boat and boats just sounded better to me. I don't have a better explanation for you, but it doesn't seem like sea foam could fling its wings, but a boat might be able to if this were sails. I don't know. That's my best guess. That's all I got. So I'd go something like this. I would come back and say, looking at it more closely, um, boat is a better answer uh, because the um, purpled wings purpled were what's about purple purpled wings because the music of purpled wings I'm not really pleased with that answer, but that's kind of what I'd start with, and then I'd go back. Some of them, it'll be clear why you got it wrong. Some of them, it's just, it's going to be tricky. Um, let me show you one other thing. The responses, where do I have that? Okay, this, I pulled these from your Mastering the AP English Literature. See up here, Mastering AP English Literature. I pulled these, and so you can go back and find some better explanations. The Chambered Nautilus, it's on page 118, and you can go and look at the answers right there and they give you they give you better explanations than I probably was able to all right so go ahead and stop this make your changes with chambered nautilus and then watch video number two for sonnet 55